With only nine days left until election day, and with over 50 million Americans already having cast their ballot, time's ticking for both campaigns to convince voters to back their candidate. For Biden's camp, time passing and no major changes in the race is a good thing. Their man is ahead, and polls certainly suggest that he has a number of viable routes to the White House. For Trump, though, things aren't looking quite so rosy, with a number of swing states seemingly swinging away from him. So in this video, we're going to run through how Trump can reasonably win the election, the states he'd need to convince, and how likely he is to pull it off. As I said, there's only nine days left until election day, and as such, we're really stepping up our coverage here on TLDI US. So if you want to make sure you see all of our videos before election day and in the aftermath of an inevitably chaotic night, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to support our work, then you can back us on Patreon or donate through PayPal. Both of those are linked down below. So, if we're being honest, polling data isn't looking great for Trump, with his opponents significantly ahead in both national and many state polls. However, that doesn't mean that Trump and his team should give up just yet. There is a path to victory that they could find, a way to the 270 electoral college votes he needs. Before we look at the ways that Trump could win, let's have a look at how the race is standing today, using average polling data pulled together by Real Clear Politics. Now, it's worth saying that these polls aren't the be-all and end-all, and following some issues with polling in recent elections, it's understandable that some people are reluctant to trust pollsters just yet. However, broadly it is reasonable to expect this polling data to be accurate, especially on a state-by-state -state level, as we explained in another video recently, and that's linked down below. Anyway, let's take a look at the current state of the race based on recent polling. We'll start with the states that are strongly in favour of one candidate or another. Biden has eight so-called solid states, which account for 118 electoral college votes, while Trump has 11 solid states, representing 63 votes. Biden then has six likelies on his side, representing 58 votes, while Trump has five, representing 29 votes. Then finally, we have the states just leaning one way or another. Biden has six, representing 40 votes, and on the other side, Trump has four, representing 33, which leaves 12 somewhere in the middle, what Real Clear Politics describes as toss-ups. In total, worth 197 electoral votes, easily enough to swing this whole thing. So, let's start by putting those toss-up states in order of most likely to be won by Trump to most likely to be won by Biden. Starting with Trump, these go Texas, Ohio, Iowa, Georgia, North Carolina, Florida, Arizona, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Nevada, Minnesota, and Michigan. However, of these, only Texas and Ohio have polling averages in Trump's favour, with Real Clear Politics putting him four points ahead of the former vice president in Texas and 0.6 points up in Ohio. Every other state in the toss-up category has Biden ahead, from just a 0.8 point lead in Iowa to a 7.8 point lead in Michigan. It's worth remembering though that there is a margin for error on all these results, and with margins normally around plus or minus three, there's a number of these states which do look more questionable. However, even with all of these swing states in play, it looks relatively hard for Trump to pull together a victory. Relatively hard, but not impossible. Given all this, it's easy to see why 538 give Trump only a 12% chance of winning the election, and the path he'd have to skate to 270 looks very slim indeed. Let's assume that all of the states that he has as solid, likely, or lean all fall Trump's way. He gets all of them, and all 125 electoral votes that that would grant him. Even still, he'd be 145 votes short of a majority. So how could he get those crucial votes? Well, it's worth looking back at the swing states we mentioned earlier, and the order we placed them in. Following that, and 538's modelling, it's fair to say that the first state we'd likely give him is Texas, therefore granting his campaign a huge 38 electoral votes. Next most likely is Ohio for 18, Iowa for 6, Georgia for 16, Florida for 29, North Carolina for 15, Arizona for 11, and then finally, Pennsylvania for 20 electoral votes. This is, according to both the Real Clear Politics Average and 538, the most likely path to the presidency for Mr. Trump. 
Oh, and he'd also likely pick up one vote from Maine's 2nd District along the way. Anyway, following this path, or the 11 others modelled by 538, Trump could win a second term. But honestly, and this isn't us being anti-Trump, it doesn't look overly hopeful based on recent polling. Remember earlier I said that only two of the swing states lent Trump's way, according to Real Clear Politics. Well, that means that only two of these swing states we've assigned to Trump are actually looking more likely to swing his way. The other 98 votes are looking more in the hands of Biden. In fact, some of these states that Trump relies on picking up are currently pretty substantially in Biden's favour, with Biden up 4.9 points in Pennsylvania, 3.2 in Arizona, and 2.1 in Florida. These aren't insurmountable odds, and some are clearly within the margin of error, but it's certainly not looking like Trump has an easy path to re-election. He'd have to fight hard to win enough of these states back. But just because the polls aren't making a Trump victory look likely right now, doesn't necessarily mean that will be the reality on election day. I mean, even Biden's campaign manager warned staffers not to become complacent. She remarked that the reality in the race is far closer than some of the punditry we're seeing on Twitter and TV would suggest. In key battleground states where this election will be decided, we remain neck and neck with Donald Trump. Going on to say that if we learn anything from 2016, it's that we cannot underestimate Donald Trump or his ability to claw his way back into contention in the final days of a campaign. So why might there be hope for Trump's campaign? What reasons are there to suspect that he's seriously still in the running? Well, firstly, there are nine days left until polls closed, which means that there's still time for things to shift. That being said, Thursday's debate was a key opportunity for Trump to shift the narrative, the biggest audience he's likely to speak to before election day. And, well, while he was calmer, he just didn't deliver. It is worth remembering, though, that at this point in the 2016 race, Comey had only just made his infamous remarks about Clinton's emails, which many speculate pushed the 2016 race in Trump's favour. As far as we know, Biden doesn't have any dodgy backup Gmail account, but twists and turns are commonplace in US elections. It certainly looks like Trump's hoping for another big twist before election day to swing voters in his favour. That's because for weeks now, Trump's been making unsubstantiated claims about Biden's corruption. But it looks like the president's now hoping for a bit of evidence, or at least the hint of some, with him requesting that Attorney General Bill Barr launches an investigation into Biden and his son Hunter. Trump even went on Fox and & Friends and said we have to get the Attorney General to act. This is major corruption and has to be known before the election. It appears that Trump's hoping that these remarks, whether he has any evidence behind them or not, will damage Biden's chances, and he clearly hopes that an open investigation will make life even harder for Biden's campaign. However, it might not land as well as it did in 2016. Jim Comey, whose remarks may, depending on who you ask, have killed Clinton's chances in 2016, is not the same as Bill Barr. Comey was, at least at the time, seen as a broadly respected and non-partisan figure, giving him high levels of trust and integrity that realistically Barr could only dream of. Also, you've got to imagine a sudden letter holds more weight than one side explicitly requesting an investigation into the other on live TV. That certainly looks more political to me. That makes it hard to imagine a scenario where Trump requests an investigation into his opposition and Bill Barr then executing it, actually killing Biden's campaign. It's especially tough when the average voter doesn't even really understand why Trump would want such an investigation. In fact, the move could end up backfiring, reinforcing the things in voters' minds which they like least about Trump. Moving on though, another reason why things could look up for Trump is that the polls could end up being wrong. While we advocate for polling and believe that broadly the data can be trusted, there will always be polling errors. As much as polling algorithms and research methods might have improved since 2016, helping pollsters get a more representative slice of the electorate, that doesn't mean that the results will be perfect. That's especially true during this current climate, with millions of voters voting in different ways for the very first time. So it's hard to predict the impact that this will have on voters, and importantly on turnout. 
Ultimately though, in a country as polarised as the US in 2020, it's the undecideds and uninterested people, those who might not choose to vote at all, that could be the most interesting. It's not likely that Trump's going to be able to do very much in the coming days to win over Democrats, but what's more likely is that his actions could mobilise those less likely to vote or those just generally less engaged with politics. The interesting thing is that in 2016, many of these people swung in his direction. Back then, around 20% of the electorate said that they disliked both candidates. Of those people, 45% of those who actually ended up voting chose Trump, while Clinton picked up around 30%, and independents and third parties scooped the rest. The thing is that it's not guaranteed it will go this way for Trump again in 2020. Those people who like neither candidates may actually be more likely to vote Biden than Trump. And that's not just liberal spin either. Biden's approval ratings have been consistently higher than Trump's. And for the Democrats, having a candidate with OK approval ratings versus one with poor approval ratings could make all the difference with these voters. Trump may have more luck with Republicans who weren't planning on voting though. It's certainly not unusual to see the polls tighten as you get closer to election day with partisan voters coming home to their party. They might not like Trump, they might not love his policies, but ultimately when it looks like their side is going to lose, they might decide that voting is worth it and they'll put a mark next to Trump's name. The point is, we're not saying that Trump can't win or that he won't. I mean, even the Biden campaign has been telling voters that in recent days. But the route to 270 certainly does look tough for Trump, with him forced to win states like Pennsylvania, which currently lean 4.9 points in Biden's direction. Polling errors, last minute shifts and big bombshell announcements could always shift these odds. And 4.9 points isn't too far from the expected margin of error. But it's safe to say at the moment, it's easier to imagine Biden reaching 270 than it is Trump. What do you think though? Do you think it's too soon to rule out Trump winning re-election? Do you trust the polling data still? Or are you keen to see what the American people really have to say on polling day? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then be sure to back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.